In today's video, I'm going to show you five simple iPad tips that make everyday tasks that a little bit easier. These are things people often overlook, but once you know them, they're super helpful. Let's get right into it. Okay, so this first tip is really useful for anyone who ever works with forms on their iPad or works with documents. So I'm going to show you how you can easily sign documents on your iPad. So this tip will work with a pen or without a pen. So if you don't have a Apple pencil, that's not a problem. I'll show you how you can sign it with your finger. So to get started, you'll need to make sure your document is saved in the files app. So if you have it in your emails, you just want to save the attachment into the files app. And then once it's in the files app, navigate to where it is. I just have a sample document here we can use for this demonstration. So we'll open the document and then you can see here, it's a full on form we can fill out and then down the bottom here, we need to sign. So if you wanna fill out the form as well, we can tap on the screen. And if you see this little picture up here with the pencil and the dots, you wanna click on that. And that's going to auto fill the form with these boxes for you. So now you can come in here and click on it and type in all of the fields of the form. But we're looking at how to sign. So if you scroll down now, you can see in the sign section, we have this blue box. So we can click on this blue box and you can see here, it automatically brings up my signatures to sign. But if you haven't set up your signature yet, you won't have anything here. So what you wanna do is add in your signature. So you wanna go add, and then you wanna hit the plus symbol. If you've never added any signatures at all before, it might look slightly different to my screen, but there should just be like a plus or an add button. If you click that, it's going to bring up this black box here. With your finger or your pen, you can do your signature. So just for example, I'm just going to write my name. If you make a mistake, you can just go clear and then you can try again. And if you have a pen, it's exactly the same. Just go clear and you can write in your signature. And then once you're happy with your signature, you can hit the tick button. And you can see here, it's placed my signature down the bottom and you can resize it by grabbing the corners. You can delete it if you want to get rid of it. And if you have to sign a few things, you can duplicate and add it to the other signature fields. You can also come up to this markup tool up here. We click on that and then we go to this plus symbol. We can also add a signature this way. So we can go add signature and then you'll have your signatures in this list here. So if you haven't created your signature yet, you'll come in here and you'll add your signature, but I've already created my Sam signature. And then you have your signature right here depending on the color of the paper you're signing, you might need to change the color of your signature. So you can click this line here and then change the color of your signature. So let's go with black. And if you find that you can't draw with your finger, when you go to sign, if you come to these three dots here, you just need to select draw with finger. So yeah, this can be really helpful. And once your signature has been set up on your iPad, you can always just come up to this icon anywhere on your iPad that you see it. So even if you opened up notes and we see we have the same icon in notes, we can click here, we go plus and you have add signature. So you don't have to be using the file app to add your signature anywhere where you see this markup icon, you can open it and find your signature to add. This tip is a great time saver. You can drop and drag files, photos, or text between apps without switching back and forth. So I'm gonna show you a few ways that this can be really useful. And the first way is in emails. So we'll open up an email. We can open a new email. So when you have your new email open, you can just swipe up to close it for a second and come over to photos, select the photo you wanna to add to your email by pressing and holding. And then with your other hand, flick up from the bottom to close out of the photo app. And you can see it has my photo here. Then if I swipe up from the bottom again, this is going to open up recently open apps and I can see my email message here. 
and then I can just drop it in. Another easy way if your iPad is on the newest update, which is iPadOS 26, you get a feature to resize your screen. So you can see this little dash down the bottom here, and that allows me to resize my screen. So this way you can have two apps open. So if I close that and open my photos, resize my photo app, then I can just click and drop any photo in. So if you want to check if you have this feature turned on, you just need to go into settings and down to multitasking and gestures. It's just called windowed apps. So just make sure that's ticked on and then you'll get this little icon down here and you can resize any app you like. Other really useful ways to use this drop and drag feature is dropping things into the notes app. So if we open up the notes app and this is just a new note and then we can open something like Safari and you can grab text from any website and drop it into your notes. So you would just select the text that you want and hold it, click up and go into our notes and then drop it in. Another really cool one is if you open up your files app and you have a PDF document you want to refer to into your notes, you can click and hold on your PDF document and go back to your notes and drop that in. So now you can view a PDF document. You can also change the size of this by clicking this little arrow up the top and you can go view as we're on large, you can go medium, you can still scroll through it and you can also go small. So this way you, you can just click on it to open it up and view it. So using drop and drag can be so helpful for moving text or PDFs around or even photos. So make sure you give this one a try. If you use notes a lot, this is an easy way to keep the important ones at the top so you don't lose track of them. So here I've just made a little folder on the side called info and then I've just put some sample notes in to show you. But this is really helpful, especially if you have a lot of notes. Sometimes it can be really hard um, to find what you're looking for and you'll have to search. So to make things easier for you, you just need to select your note that you want at the top of your screen. So press and hold, and then you just go pin note. And now it's always going to be pinned at the top of the screen. It doesn't matter how many notes you have in here, it will always just be right up the top there so you can grab it. So here is another quick one. By pressing and holding on any of your app icons, it's going to open up another shortcut menu. So if we press and hold on Safari, you can see here it's given me shortcuts to do a bunch of different things. So we can open a new tab in Safari, a new window, go to a window that I've already got open. Um, you can even resize your app into a widget. Um, so you've got all these different shortcuts. So if you press and hold on other icons, like let's say the photo app, you can see here it's got its own shortcuts. YouTube, press and hold. Email's a good one. You can start a new email just by pressing and holding and selecting new email. That can be really helpful. Um, even files, you can scan a document using the camera on your iPad straight away instead of opening it up and going through it that way. So go test this out, press and hold on any apps and see what the shortcuts are for it and see if there's any shortcuts that are going to streamline things for you. And finally, if you find a website doesn't load properly for you on your iPad or it hides certain buttons, you can switch to a desktop version to fix it. So what I mean by this is if you open up Safari, you'll find that on your iPad or even your iPhone, most of the websites you go to will open up in a mobile view. And this is usually a cut down version of the website. So you can see here when we've opened up Wikipedia, this will be in mobile view, but you might be missing a few items from the website. So if we come up to this icon here and then click on the three dots on the side, you can see here request desktop website. And if we click on that, 
it's going to give us the full desktop version like you would have on a proper computer, which will add in things here. So you can see here, we've got a few more different menus that we didn't have before. It can just be really helpful on certain websites, especially those ones where you might need to upload a document or something like that. It might only work in the desktop view. It's good just to know you have the option to switch between mobile view and desktop view. Mobile view is great for just reading things and stuff like that. If you use your iPad as a bit of a replacement for a computer, you will probably find that this will be handy at some point. So it's just good to know that you have the option to view a website in mobile view or desktop view. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you found it helpful and let me know in the comments below which tip you're going to try out first. And if you want to check out any other episodes from this series, I'll leave that link below as well. And make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.